No children have been here for more than a month. Over the past two weeks, 10 investigates watched as equipment and office furniture were removed from this once embattled behavioral treatment center for teens. Sequel Pomegranate, which rebranded itself as Tory earlier this year, notified the state last month it planned to close its psychiatric hospital and voluntarily relinquish all of its licenses. No explanation was given, but admissions here and the money that followed have dramatically dropped off since early 2020, when Franklin County Children's Services stopped sending kids here, citing a pattern of problems. That move followed months of our reporting, which documented incidents of violence and abuse, and stories from parents and children who expressed concern about how children were treated and restrained. Do you think about the time you spent there? Do you think about it a lot? Not anymore. No. I hate that place. Another child we interviewed described how injections were given to some unruly kids to sedate them. If they'll lay you over on your side and then they'll like give it to your thigh, that's why they call it the booty juice. And what does it do to kids who get it? They go to like they just basically they'd be like, we're gonna like basically like we're gonna knock you out with the booty juice and they go straight to sleep. Problems at other treatment centers operated by the parent company Sequel Youth and Family Services have led to closures at facilities in states like Utah, Wyoming, Illinois, and Michigan. But 10 Investigates has learned Sequel co-founder Jay Ripley has started a new venture called Vivent Behavioral Healthcare, which according to this investment group website, plans to buy back a majority of Sequel Youth and Family Services properties. We found Vivent has filed business licenses to operate in at least three states, Arizona, Alabama, and Kansas. I called Ripley this week curious about if there are any future plans in Ohio, but haven't heard back. But the ability to close, rebrand, and potentially reopen a youth treatment center is part of what patient advocates say is a loosely regulated landscape. But they just, it sounds like whack-a-mole. They just pop up somewhere else. Um, because again, there's money to be made here, at least the way they run these facilities. And so they're not, they're not walking away. They'll try to put, you know, lipstick on a pig maybe by, you know, changing the name or doing some kind of corporate, you know, sleight of hand. But uh, these, these, they make too much money to just walk away completely. This week, Curtis Decker joined Paris Hilton outside the Capitol to call on members of Congress to pass legislation that would create a Bill of Rights for children in these facilities and further regulate the industry. For 20 years, I couldn't sleep at night as memories of physical violence, the feeling of loneliness, the loss of peers rushed through my mind when I shut my eyes. This was not just insomnia, it was trauma. Decker's group also issued a report which cited the work of 10 investigates and calls for more oversight in an industry that makes millions treating vulnerable children. Bennett Haberly, 10 Investigates.